it's special being able to play him in the Bundesliga, but I think that's a whole nother kind of special, being on the national team with your brother and hopefully being able to play play a game with him, you know, and, and for him to be at the same camp with me. I think that's just a different kind of um, just feeling, you know. I think for the longest time, I mean, we've been watching the national team and, and striving to be at the national team. I mean, it's your U14, you're trying to make the U.S. youth national team, you know, and you just want to be there so bad to be with the best group of players. But then making it through all of that and finally getting to the first team, I think that that is an amazing moment and something that we both dreamed of for a long time. But to represent with him would be a dream come true. Oh, it is a delight to sit here in downtown Smashville with one of my favorite American footballers, a three lung mischief maker. He's gone from practicing footwork drills against his brother in the family basement, as you do, oh, to playing in the biggest football leagues in the world with the Philadelphia Union, Red Bull Salzburg and Leeds United before taking his talents to the German capital, the land of Bratwurst and Umlauts to join Union Berlin, a team with an inspiring past and a dream-filled future. One that's experiencing Champions League football for the first time in their history. And after proudly representing the United States in the 2022 World Cup, he's in town for this week's friendly against the Black Stars of Ghana. To watch him in full flow on the field Oh, is to witness a footballing Timothy Chalamet. You know him <laughs> as the pride of Philly's YSC Academy. And thanks to Bud Light, easy to drink, easy to enjoy, for bringing us together to sit down here in Nashville. It's a delight to say. Willkommen zu Brendan Aronson. <laughs> thanks, thanks for having me. Oh, Brendan, it's so lovely to be with you. It really is. We're talking just three months after you swapped West Yorkshire for mm -hmm. East Berlin. 600 miles further away from Metford, New Jersey. So following the footsteps of your fellow Americans, Bobby Wood and Jordan Peefock joining Union Berlin. Club made a video to introduce you to its passionate supporters, the Unioners. And they had to be thrilled that you were already embracing the proud German tradition of wearing socks with your Birkenstocks. <laughs> in the video, you took photos in the UK, you signed the official paperwork, you got reintroduced to German baked goods. You said that day was your first time in Berlin, Brendan. What did you know about the club mm -hmm. and about the city before you boarded that plane? Yeah, I mean, it was definitely something I had to do a little research on uh, be before coming. I, I didn't, I'm being honest, I didn't know much about the club, but I had known of the last couple of years just how much they've jumped. You know, every year seemed to have gotten better and better, and it was honestly really interesting. I remember looking at a YouTube video not long ago. I think it was like Copa 90 made it or something like this. <laughs> I remember watching it on YouTube and I thought, oh my, like, what's crazy club, you know, like going from all the way at the bottom where the fans had to build their stadium, basically, yes. you know, uh, it's, it's an amazing story. And you can tell by the fan base, you know, I've, I've been around there right now and it's just like they're diehards and they care about the, they care about the club so much and they care about the players so much. I mean, I got called a foosball god on my uh, first day there. So it's, it's amazing. And it's, it's, it's been a really great start. And, we made that go on all of our gravestones um but it does have an incredible backstory i watched yeah. that same bloody video it's yeah. so nice that you're doing the same thing yeah. as as we all are but when the berlin war went up in 1961 mm -hmm. this club became a symbol of hope and rebellion for those yeah. in the east decades later in a now unified city it revels as you say in being a club for the people being cross town and recently relegated rival Hertha Berlin's hipster sibling, <laughs> always the Phoebe Bridges to Hertha's Billie Eilish. When Union was on the cusp of being promoted to the Bundesliga for the first time in its history, 2019, supporters held a banner that read, Scheiße, we're going up. <laughs> um, they, could, they couldn't believe it either. And you said that before you moved to Red Bull, you, you did watch this TV documentary. I mean, tell us what you saw when you were watching it, how it felt. Because I genuinely, I yeah. would have just been listening to David Bowie's Berlin trilogy. Or <laughs> Rhino, but you learn yeah. more. No, 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 I think watching the video gave me a lot of like clarity and like it showed me like what the club really meant to the, to the fans. And it was, it was really, really cool to see. And it made you want to get there and start playing already. You know, it was like a, almost a hype up video for me. You know, it was like, it was, it was really cool. And uh, I got to, of course, talk with the coach and uh, the sporting director before, and it was good to hear what they had to say and, and why they want to bring me to the club. And yeah, I think it just clicked, you know, and I felt like it was a great start to be at. And I really just liked their plans. And it was, it was really, yeah, it was really eye-opening for who me. Who is the one who called you football god? All the fans there, they scream it right before the game. They say, they say your name and then they scream foosball god. 
How is that? Are you just? Is it, I, I think I'd have imposter syndrome. I'd, I'd be like, yeah. Is that though? Are you just like yes, I am? Like first day, I was like, what? Nah, no, foosball caught already. I didn't even touch a ball yet. You know, like <laughs> it's crazy. But it was. It's really cool because I think that they. I think part of it is is giving confidence to the players. You know, and and being behind them no matter what. And I think that's what's really cool about it. You've had so much life experience. You are still so bloody young. January 2021, it was when you left the Philadelphia Union to join yeah. Red Bull Salzburg. You were just a 20-year-old, yeah. barely 20. Since then, you lived in Salzburg, Austria, picturesque city that's remained yeah. desperately thirsty for Mozart in Leeds, a magnificent northern city, which calls itself England's capital of the north, and now in Berlin. But then, just spending so much time living and working in other cities, these truly great European cities, does it make you more aware of your Americanness, or, or, or do you feel a little more German every time you bite into a curry verse? <laughs> no, I would, I would say, yeah, I think that, I, I, I mean, like you said, I left really early on, you know, and I think that it was an amazing experience for me, and I think I, I love being over in Europe, it's amazing, but you definitely miss home. I, I said it to a lot of people just coming here, it's, it's refreshing being back home, you know, I love Europe, I love the way it is and it's different than America, but it's just home, you know, and, and being home is, is, is amazing and just makes you feel like comfortable, a little bit more comfortable and all these things. And I get to see family easier. They're able to come to my games. Of course, I have my girlfriend in Europe and my family can visit, but it's nothing like being home, like seeing some friends sometimes, having extended family come. It's, it's amazing, you know, and I think it's it's what makes it feeling like home. Cody, I think it's a slow, gradual thing when you find yourself choosing to casually yeah. Just wear lederhosen around the house. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Quick question from a GFOP at Gabidla: Better Schnitzel, Salzburg or Berlin? <sighs> That's actually a tough question because I haven't had Schnitzel in Berlin yet. To be fair. What? I know. I know. It's what? it's bad. Why do we play football if not to consume Schnitzel? Malena has been. My girlfriend's been cooking a lot, so yeah. I mean that's been nice. But I mean, I have to say, Salzburg Schnitzel was amazing. I really like the schnitzel there with the with the cranberry sauce. It was it was, yeah. I love that. I love how you you've ditched that question smartly because that question I think is a trap. It's like yeah. you, it's like waiting until the cheese steak wars in Philly. Jim's <laughs> no, you don't know anything, idiot. Union has had a challenging start to their Bundesliga season. Team went into this international break city in thirteenth place, two wins out of seven. What's the adjustment been like for you to mm -hmm. move into this league, the Bundesliga? Yeah. And what are the differences that you've experienced technically, physically? Um, between the Bundesliga and, and say the Premier League. Yeah, well, every league's different. I think everybody can can see that from afar. I think that every league's different, and it's really interesting. And it's it's awesome playing in different leagues and experiencing every kind of football. Um, like like you said, it's been a tough run at the club right now. It hasn't been the easiest, but listen, it's never up like this. I mean, I know that from my career path too. It's never up. There's always downs, and it's like a roller coaster ride. That's what my dad always says, and. Uh, you just have to stick on it and, and believe in yourself and believe in the team. And at the end of the day, I think it will even out. And the the mentality of the squad, I think, will we'll be able to turn it around for as, sure. As someone that's only experienced a career uh, with downs and none of the ups, like, well, technically, what does it feel like the Bundesliga different to yeah. your family with it in your experience? Yeah, I think technically, I think that the Bundesliga is it's very high pressure compared to... Um, uh, the Premier League. I think that both are very high pressure and physical. I think they have a lot of similarities like that. I do. But I also think that, pro like this is just my feeling, I think Premier League is more like what they call it in Germany, ping pong. So it's back and forth more or less. You know, like there's a lot more uh, counter-attacking football in the Premier League. Um, in Bundesliga, there's a lot more tactics in getting behind the ball. Like for us, for example, we're, we're very tactically behind the ball where we're setting in a block so it's hard to break. The teams are having a hard time breaking us down. So it's it's a lot different, you know, in that kind of way. Like tactically, I think you have a lot more teams that are playing like like us, and it's hard to break down. Where in the Premier League, it's like back and forth, athletic, and it, it's it's tough. September, Union Berlin made history. Its first ever appearance in the Champions League, yeah. holding off Real Madrid at the Bernabeu mm. until Jude Bellingham tapped in cruelly in extra time, and you'd already made your Champions League debut two years earlier with Salzburg. Bagging an assist when Salzburg drew 1-1 with Bayern and their then head coach, noted kickflip enthusiast Julian Nagelsmann. Brendan, this is an amazing part of your story, which I love. As a grade schooler, you've talked about how you used to try to sneak watch Champions League matches, hiding your phone under your desk. Yeah. You were that kid. Yeah. 
So how does it feel to have gone through the looking glass from sneaking games on the old phone yeah. in class to it being you standing in those iconic stadia, hearing that music, that unmistakable theme song play over and over in the speakers? Honestly, you know, you don't really think about the journey, how like quick it's been, you know? I mean, it's, it's when I think back to it, when I do, and like my parents always say like, you know, be proud of yourself, be like this, but I always want more, you know, that's just my, my uh, personality. And I always want to be the best player I can be. And I'm always trying to reach the best. So I'm not really thinking about the past. I just want to think about the present and what I can do in the future. And uh, yeah, I think- What going, are you thinking about? Just that day, I think if I didn't do well in training my shooting, then I got to work on my shooting or my, if I didn't do well with my dribbling in the game and not holding the defender off, I have to work on that. I think any way to just get better. What is your message to kids in South Jersey looking at this video? They're thinking, I sneak Champions League football. <laughs> well, I mean, so what's your message to them? Anything's possible. You know, I think that I was the kid too, uh, watching games under my desk at middle school and in high school. And I was in the same position as most of these kids. And I just worked and, and it worked and my dream came true. And I think that the biggest message I can say to young kids is just, uh, when you think that you're doing enough, that's not really enough. You know, you got to keep doing more and more. That's why I went <laughs> on. Now, now I find that out. But Manchester City, I love this. Erling Haaland has talked about how he uses the Champions League theme music as his alarm on this winter <laughs> yeah. wake up to yeah. Just imagine him just snapping up my score <laughs> goals every morning. US Women's National Team legend Julie Ertz came on our show, talked about how the home screen on her phone is a photo of herself missing a shot on goal during the agonizing 2020 Olympics. Do you have anything on your phone or taped to your mirror or hanging uh, on the refrigerator that you use for motivation yeah. to pick you up in those moments when you need it? Um, I, I just, I mean, my reliance is like, I have, I have other things, you know, I have my reliance is my support system, you know, my, my dad, Rusty. My mom, yeah, Rusty. He was on the show, of course, so he got the Should have his own it. show. <laughs> <laughs> my, my grandparents, uh, both sides. I have both, I'm fortunate to have both sides, which is amazing. Amazing. Everybody, you know, I even have an aunt that is my grandpa's sister that is, goes to, went to every single one of my Philadelphia Union games, watches all the games. So I rely on those people. I mean, my girlfriend's family, my friends back home watch all my games. So it's a support system for me, you know, that I, I rely on and I listen to them for and about good games, bad games. And in the beginning of the seasons, I always try to make a goal list of what I want to do for this season. So um, I think doing those kinds of things and, and focusing on my mental health throughout the season too, I think that's always good. You've already accumulated an incredible number of nicknames. I don't know how many of these you're aware of. <laughs> it's been a lot. Metford Messi, Paul Roll Pele, <laughs> oh, the square ball, magnificent fanzine in Leeds. Chris and you, Yank Badger. You know, did you have a nickname growing up? Or one that you wanted to stick that never quite did. I mean, we know the football got thing, but I think that's like the Union, the, the Union Berlin fans should know about. I mean, the one that I can always think of that I was just always called by like friends that I played on my U8 soccer team growing up, and the parents even called me. It was just Brendo, just simple but Brendo. You know, I was just something that always stuck with me, and I always liked it. You know, it was just the nickname that I had in youth age. You know, and I always liked it. When you were young, at the under eights and the yeah, yeah, yeah. were you like, call me Tim Reed? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I don't want to say that. I might take offense to that. <laughs> oh, that's who I want. Yeah. Be. And <laughs> um, for the first time since you squared off against each other every day in your parents' basement this season, you are playing in the same league as your brother, twenty-year-old Paxton. Mm, yeah. He's providing track Frankfurt. Liverpool's Alexis McAllister recently joked that he hoped his brother, Kevin, a defender with the Belgian side, Union saint Jouars, would, quote, suffer when the two faced each other uh, in the Europa League at Anfield. But when they did play, they couldn't hide their joy yeah. or the thrill of sharing that really immense moment. I can't imagine what that must have felt like, but what, what combination of emotions do you expect when you uh, and Union face Paxton's side for the first time on November the 4th? Yeah, I think that's a that's a schedule. I mean, that's a date that everybody has marked on their schedule, um, in my family at least. I don't know how many people are going to come. I don't even want to think about the tickets right now. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's an amazing moment. I mean, I, me and him haven't really talked about it because, you know, you're in this season, you're in this mindset that, like, you have to be on go every time for the next game. You're not thinking on 
like the game that's three weeks ahead, four weeks ahead. But I'm sure when the moment comes, it's going to be special. You know, just seeing him on the other side, seeing him in the tunnel, uh, just knowing that we're playing against each other in a top five league in the world. It's it's amazing, you know, and it's just shows how far we've come. And it's a special moment, you know. The two of you used to destroy each other yeah. in your basement. What did he call it? He had the nickname for the basement. Uh, the dungeon. The, the dun dungeon, yeah, the dungeon. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. One minute you are absolutely kicking the snot out of each other in the dungeon. Yeah. yeah. The next minute you're in the now Bundesliga, yeah. kicking the snot out of each other. It's crazy, yeah. And, but it's like it's like something that like it's you don't really think about it like that, you know. I mean, and of course in the moment it'll be amazing, you know. But it's just like we're playing each other again, you know. It's like a no mercy, no mercy, no mercy. He knows no mercy. If there's a tackle, we'll go into the tackle fifty-fifty. You will. I might be a little bit like. But no, I'll, I, I'll go Mr. in. Mr. McKinney said that when he was coming in for a ball and he saw it was Tim Ream on the other side, he said, uh, you know, I took a lot off. And Tim Ream said the same. Yeah. But you guys will actually probably turn it up. Maybe a little bit. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. No, I, I think I would be the same way. But, yeah. Let's move from your club to country, or in your case, from number seven to number 11. Mm -hmm. You have lived a lot of life in the past seven months, Brendan, <laughs> physically, yeah. emotionally, yeah. mentally. And one of the hallmarks of this U.S. team is, is its togetherness. Mm -hmm. you, you all often refer to it as a brotherhood. After all you've been through, the highs, the lows, the changes, can you articulate what you experience emotionally when you walk back into camp like this, straight out of the crucible of European football? Does it feel like a safe space when you arrive at the airport? How would you describe it? Yeah, I would describe it just like you said, I think a safe space. You know, I think that, of course, like it's, it's another competition you know coming back and playing against two amazing countries Germany and Ghana um, but I think that it is a safe space you know coming to see the guys um, it's just a different vibe it's a different um, like what kind of a vibe like I think it's just a big fan yeah it, it's less competing it's more just as a group you know just enjoying each other you know enjoying each other being around each other I think that the group has it's like a it's you know it has like a brotherhood feeling now you know I think everybody feels uh, part of it, I think that the guys that come in, you know, like first guy that are coming into camps feel it too. They feel that the, the, the group is so together and, and does a lot of things together and cares about each other. I think even like a little things, like the way that we celebrate, I think something that stuck with me is like last camp, I scored the amazing free kick that I'll say, <laughs> but no, nah, it, it wasn't the best, but just like the <laughs> celebration, you know, uh, grabbing me, picking me up, and just everybody huddles around. You know, I think it's the little things that can just you feel go. it. Yeah, you feel it. You know, and I think that's what makes the group so special. Also curious, when that flight does touch down from Europe in the United States, what's the first thing that makes you feel like you're you're really home? Is it like a food? Is it hearing American accents when you turn on the TV? Been able to watch the Eagles at a decent time Sunday afternoon. Yeah, that's true too. But I'm not. I mean, I can't. I don't want to say this online because I'm going to get a lot of hate. But I'm actually a 49ers fan. What? And that's a bombshell for everybody no, probably in here. Yeah, I know. I'm a, I'm a 49ers fan. My my dad's from Sacramento, so I always grew up being a 49ers fan. I, you know, I love that. Passing it on from <laughs> one generation yeah. to another. God yeah. bless. Yeah. So the 49ers at a regular time. They're still doing good, too, so they're 4-0. <laughs> and they're doing well, too. But, yeah, it's it's funny. I'm going to get some hate for that, for sure. Some who? Philly fans, 100%. The, 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 the Philly fans are the most welcoming supportive oh yeah <laughs> definitely you can human beings yeah um but why is the thing that makes you feel most okay is it the hate from the philly fans that makes you at home <laughs> <laughs> no no i think <laughs> i think for me i think it's just coming in the first day and hearing the Amer american accents and and i think getting that first night of chipotle right off the flight God. that's that's the go-to i think for everybody on the team is i think getting one american place that just makes you feel like you're at home. The restaurant that Weston McKinney built. Um, <laughs> last time we spoke, you were on the precipice of the World Cup. Do you have a sponsorship with Chipotle? No, I don't. Chipotle, would you get on this? <laughs> say, I would love that. What are you too, doing, so. man? <laughs> get on it. Um, last time we spoke, you were on the precipice of the World Cup, and you told mm -hmm. me the prospect of playing for your country, standing side by side with your teammates, hearing mm -hmm. the anthem, hearing Matt Turner sing the anthem. My <laughs> God, that's the most. Sorry. Who was it? Oh, God, it was Lalas who once played, sang the anthem and then played in the game. Matt Turner and Lalas, thank God, very different human beings. <laughs> um, but you said it would represent a dream come true. You ended up playing in every single game of the competition. Mm -hmm. You came on as a sub, still managed to cover every blade of grass. You made your heat map look like football's answer to Pangea. <laughs> and I know that the World Cup was now almost a year ago, which is incredible, but it is the pinnacle. 
the promised land and you got to sit from that cup. Well, what was one memory or lesson from the tournament that stayed with you? What is the 2022 story that you'll tell the errants and grandchildren one day? I think I've heard it a million times, but I think we changed the way that uh, the world views American soccer. I think we did. I mean, I, I felt it after the game, you know, going back to my club, um, hearing was like, oh my God, I didn't know you guys were that good. You know, like you guys put in a shift against England and England has one of the most amazing teams in the world, you know? So I think getting that respect, I think in people actually seeing it on the world stage against the world's best, I think really stuck with people, you know? Watching Christian sacrifices down below is <laughs> clear. Like, yeah. like that, that's commitment. Yeah. But it was there a moment that when you think about it, like genuinely, yeah. like not a big picture thing, but it's like a, a moment that comes to you. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, there's so many. Uh, I think like, just the, just like you're, and my dad always says this to me too. I think going into games and feeling you should feel nervous for games. You know, if you're not nervous and you're not like really into the game, you know. And I think that that nervous feeling that I had going into the to the first game was like no Wales, other, like no other. You know, like uh, you have the whole country, you know, like looking at you and and wanting to see like you guys succeed. You know, and I think. Um, were you that, aware of that? Were you like, oh my God, this is like, I've been nervous before, but this is just all, this no, is honest, 11. Honestly, no, I think it was like a normal nervous for any game, you know? Um, but it was like that little bit more. But I wasn't thinking about all the other people looking at me around the world. I think it was just going out there and just doing a shift for my team, helping the team, you know? And I think that's the best thing as a sub. Like that was my role in the tournament was, was coming in and helping the team no matter what situation. And there's been a lot of change around this team in 2023, but your role has stayed consistent. We played every game which you've been at camp. I mean, what I talk about was unquestionably been the high, the CONCACAF Nations League victory in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada, a rather spicy 3-0 victory over Mexico in the semi-finals, and then that 2-0 triumph in the final over our neighbours to the north, Canada, a final which you started as a central midfielder, helped drive that team consistently forward. And I've rarely seen this team play with such buccaneering joy and freedom. And the scenes that followed, I mean... Bowling Christian Pulisic into champagne bottles. <laughs> uh, Flo Balogun going full Ashlyn Harris and documenting it all on his IG Lives. It was a real moment of bonding for this young team. Watching them, essentially it was like watching them live out the hangover part four with the world watching. <laughs> what was the first thing you saw when you walked back into that locker room after having won? And what, what's your favourite personal moment from those celebrations? Yeah, I think like even... Going into that, I'll, I'll bring up something even going into that game. You know, I think that when Weston and uh, Serge got those red cards, I think we knew that we had to step up. And I think that the thing that I got was they they have confidence in the guys that didn't play the first game against Mexico. And Joe and I came in and, and we felt that, that confidence that we had, you know. Uh, we weren't starting in the first game, but the team depended on us and believed in us to come in and do the job that Weston and... and uh, Serge would do and I think oh, that Scally. yeah yeah Scally Scally a very good friend of mine but yeah um, just I think that that feeling of just going in and just relying on, on guys and I think everybody rely, relies on the whole squad and I think the coaches put that confidence in you so even going into that game it was it was nice having that confidence and uh, yeah I think the moment where I felt like like whoa like it was just like the celebration at the end of the game you know it was like wow we we did it again back-to-back -back champions um played a good game you know I don't I think we handled the game really really well for for a young team and I think that just the celebrations putting the trophy up again I think it just resonated with me because with the first time that we did it you know and it was just amazing seeing everybody smile and laugh let's fling Christian across the yeah let's yeah let's fling part of Christian across the thing hopefully he doesn't get injured but let's fling him across <laughs> the you know <laughs> we want to get back into that bond that we spoke about between you and your teammates because there is a real core of players Christian, Tyler, Weston, you, Brendan, players that are constantly in, constantly leading. You've had 34 caps since your debut against Costa Rica in February 2020, which actually makes you a 22-year-old veteran for this team. But there is new blood coming in all the time. There's Danish-born Palermo defender Christopher Lunt, debuted last camp. This camp, it's a magnificent head of hair. Berlin's own Leonard Maloney of Heidenheim. When someone comes into camp, I would imagine it must be difficult because so many of you are so bloody tight. Mm -hmm. Do you do anything specific to make the almost the new kid in class feel welcome? Yeah, I think that everybody to begin with, I think that everybody can kind of, that comes into camp. I mean, I, I felt the same thing when I was new, when I first came in for the first time. I think that you just feel 
the love and, and wanting them to be a part of the group. I think that that's the biggest thing about the group that's great, you know? And I think that also just doing little things like everybody's, they put in the group chat, everybody's invited to go play golf. Everybody's invited to go to the zoo. Things like this, you know, I think that that's, that's great, you know, at the end of the day and, and having everybody, you're not just doing little things on your own, you're inviting everybody to do everything. Is there a type, is there a specific initiation process for the US thing? Oh yeah, singing, always. It is. Singing and some questions, you know. So I think it's the, the last game, the night before the game. Yeah. Uh, we, we have all the new guys sing and they're asked some questions. Some embarrassing kind of questions, I guess, or and then they have to sing their song. What's the best song rendition that you've seen? Who just got a pair of lungs on them? A lot of them are bad, if I'm being honest. Yeah, well, which, <laughs> which one's the worst then? The <laughs> oh god, that's that's not a good question either because that could go bad. That could go down. No bad, one's watching yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, dude, who I I can't even like think. I like. The performances are like not great though. They don't like sit with me, you yeah. know. Like there's not one that like really like. You. They yeah, they, you. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of who was bad. Was it one? I mean, I was there? bad too. Like what I'm not being. I sang "Baby" by Justin Bieber, <laughs> <laughs> but mine was bad. Like I remember mine was just like they just wanted me to get off. Like it was like I sang like two lines and they just clapped me off because they just politely. wanted me to yeah, yeah. not even, like not even really politely but yeah. they just wanted me off the the chair um by the way i just love this idea that at this point you're just trying to get greg to call up people who can really challenge you on the golf course which we'll discuss in a moment <laughs> we do want to go inside camp does it, does it feel like the college experience that so many of you missed out on because you went to europe to play football you know you're like popping into each other's rooms to play video games is there like late night bullshit session <laughs> how, how are you passing the infinite amount of downtime in camp yeah, I think, like I said, I think they the, the national team sets up things. Um, even the guys set up things on our own. Um, I remember last camp when we were in uh, Minnesota, we just put in the group chat, like, a bunch of us are going to Top Golf. Like, you know, like, whoever wants to come can come. And we had, like, 10 guys just go out and just do something like that. So I think doing that, you know, walking around the city, I, what I love to do is I will always love going and seeing all the sporting venues at all the, the cities. I like to go around. I always like to get maybe, like, a, a jersey or something. <laughs> Um, I really like it, and I I went to a Twins game last time. Last uh, I just snuck in. I just wanted to go watch and then watch a few innings, but it was it was awesome. You know, I really like doing that. So walking around the city, of course, playing video games. Me, uh, Gio, and Joe have been playing a lot of uh, Rocket League this trip, so that's been. That's who's, been the, who is the, who's the sharpest game? I'm gonna have to say me. <laughs> and then that's that's not. I'm, I swear it's true. It's Tim Ream. <laughs> what? What? Wait, what, what if, the, if the game's frogger, it's Tim Reeb. But what, what, one of the ways that's been very well documented with this current crop of players is the golf. Every international break, yeah. in a way, it seems like a bit like the Live Golf Tour, but with, with, with real stakes. Brendan, can we get an update? Can America get an update? What has the handicap been whittled down to? It hasn't been whittled down too much because I haven't been playing a ton of golf. In Germany? In Germany. Um, they're a little bit more strict with the rules i would say you need like a handicap and all this things and it's, it's pretty tough because i don't have my handicap i never got it done yet oh to but, get on the course and yeah, yeah you need a handicap card yeah but i showed them that i had a, a card back in england when i was a part of a a country club there but i would probably say i'm around a 20 around a 20 right around there if i'm being honest i think that's that's probably where my game's at we did see some photographs of you playing earlier today but yeah. i say your takeaway is looking on point yeah it looks i'm i'm getting a lot better really i think the thing that i need to take my next step on yes, is probably please. my uh my well, you my approach shot that's what it is i think the approach shot could be better because i think i could get like a few more you know birdies sprinkled in there if i put it like closer to the pin you that's know that's where you're losing strokes that's where i'm losing strokes i'm missing the greens just a little bit and then it's short and relying on my short short game and that needs a little bit more work too there are two types of golfers those who play everything down and put everything in and those who fluff up every light and are very liberal with their gimmies which are you <laughs> that's a good question because i think everybody's different um <laughs> I'll be asking for gimmies because I don't want to hit the putt sometimes, if I'm being honest. But I would say I'm, 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 a, I'll, I'm a gimme guy. I'll give guys gimmies. You know, Brendan Owens yeah. and begs for gimmies, and I love that. If you've got to pick one U.S. men's national team to partner with you for a Ryder Cup-style alternate shot match against Christian Pulisic, 
and Walker Zimmerman. Oh, God. There you go. We just played them yesterday. So. You did? Yeah. Who's we? Scully and you. So it was me and Weston. You allowed Weston to play? Yeah, I allowed Weston to play. I allowed him to play on my team, too, so that was He must have just been playing yeah. terrible golf, but so proud of himself. Yeah. Like, oh, everybody did. Yeah, so it was funny yesterday. It was me and Weston, and then Joe and Gio, and then Walker. And, and Christian showed up later because he had a shoot. So, But it was Walker by himself versus us four, and uh, it was pretty even all the way through it. Walker against all four of you? No, like it was 2v2. It's like some kind of Bruce Lee movie. Yeah. <laughs> it was a 2v2 scramble. Okay. So like we played yeah, yeah. the scramble yeah. between Weston and Joe and Got Gio. You. And then Walker played by himself, basically. So it was pretty even, actually. Yeah. And then when Christian got there, they gave us a stroke. And um, I think the champion of the day was Gio and Joe. They played really good yesterday. So if it was you against the great Zim yeah. and Christian Pulisic, yeah. who, and you... If I had to pick one? Yeah. I would pick two though, because that's a better chance. <laughs> these are these are these are theoretical questions. Okay, these okay. Are, these are all hypothetical. Yeah, okay, questions. All you, can, you, can, you can pick ten players. If I, I had to pick one, one I would pick Tim Ream. Remo. Remo, because I know game like? his game's good, but he hasn't played because of his arm. Of course, when he broke his arm, so he can't play right now. But I, he doesn't talk like he's like amazing. But I know he's really good. You know, he's like one of those guys. He talks it down. But he's very good, you know, and I know he is because that's what really I've heard. He's a really old putter. Probably, you know, he's probably good with the putter. Like, I think my driving in hybrid or off the tee is very good. Like, that's my best part of my game I can put in our fairway for us. Oh. And then it's just him. And then he get... brings out like a mashy. Yeah. Like, Lads, I'll knock it down from there. By the way, I do love this because then like the Ryder Cup, America wins either way. I mentioned your brother Paxton already, and he's been playing youth football for the United States. He may have won the Golden Ball and the Golden Boot at the CONCACAF Under-20 Championship last year. Debuted for the senior team during a January friendly. You, of course, won in camp for those games. Mm -hmm. Got to imagine the day you appear together in a US jersey for the national team is not far off. Do you think about what it will mean for you to play at international level with your brother, your best mate, recreate those games in the dungeon in Metford. Yeah, I think that's even, you know, I mean, it's special being able to play him in the Bundesliga, but I think that's a whole nother kind of special, being on the national team with your brother and hopefully being able to play, play a game with him, you know, and, and for him to be at the same camp with me. I think that's just a different kind of um, just feeling, you know. I think for the longest time, I mean, we've been watching the national team and, and we'll, striving to be at the national team. I mean, it's your U14, you're trying to make the U.S. youth national team, you know, and you just want to be there so bad to be with the best group of players. But then making it through all of that and finally getting to the first team, I think that that is an amazing moment and something that we both dreamed of for a long time. But to represent with him would be a dream come true, really. When, when you were kids and you were looking at the U.S. team, which players were you looking at being like, oh, Paxton, look at him, we, we could be like him. Yeah. Who like, was that? I mean, there's so many that I could say that are true legends of the national team. I think everybody, I think everybody paved away in their own way. Yeah. You know, I think that for, for me and Paxton, though, since we were... When you were more, really Yeah, young. when we were more attacking. Tim um, Ream. Of. Tim Ream, of course. Yeah. Of course, Tim Ream. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from Tim Ream. Um, I would probably say Landon Donovan and, and, and Clint Dempsey, just because we were just attacking players and yeah. we wanted to emulate their game a little bit, too. So I think that that was... Two guys that we really, really looked up to. Cup, you know, I bet you, yeah, they can get Concacaf to uh, actually play regulation games in the dungeon. Oh, they. I mean, it's a Conca small pitch. It's yeah. probably ten by ten, but Concacaf would be like, sure, play <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. in the um, in the Aronson basement. God, but that would be incredible to play. London and Clint like did seem like brothers. They seemed like yeah. a cop buddy duo. But to be genuinely real brothers playing for this US team, we have long said. U.S. football needs more Aronsons. <laughs> uh, and Brendan, we're talking about you as if you're like the veteran. Yeah. We're talking about your brother, but you are still just 22 years old. Mm -hmm. You have lived so much life as a professional football player. Four World Cup games at this table. Between the two of us, we played four <laughs> bloody World Cup games. <laughs> you also experienced a heartbreak and relegation. Yeah. The, just the, 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 the kinetic wonder of European nights. You played in the Champions League. And so much of that's come during a hyper-compressed time. Yeah. Your life is, has completely changed in, in really a handshake of months. If you could go back two years ago, what message would you have for that Brendan Owens? I think that, yeah, two years ago, 
Um, I would say just be ready for the ups and downs. I think that that was something that, um, if I'm being honest, hit me a little bit at Leeds. You know, I mean, it's never easy to go through moments like I did and, and the team did at that time. And um, I think being ready for the ups and downs, and I think it was tough, um, but it taught me so much. I learned so much. And as a player and as a person, I grew. You know, it made me a stronger player. I, I, I learned a lot. Um, I know that my mental strength got higher and I, I was able to deal with a lot more. And I just feel like I'm a stronger person from all the experiences I've had, you know, changing clubs again, going to Union Berlin, it's, it's not easy, you know, changing clubs, having to adapt to a new club like this and the new league and, and all these kinds of things. <laughs> it's, uh, I need to start and get, taking more classes, I would say. That's the best I'll say about that. <laughs> Ambition. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, in terms of that, that journey, mm-hmm. I mean, psychologically, have, like, is, there a, is there a new mental structure that you take in a new, yeah a tool that you actually employ mentally as you move forward yeah i think i think caring less about i mean i'm a i'm a people pleaser at the end of the day i'm a a guy that cares about what other people think but honestly you have to have that thick skin and, and not care about what other people think at moments you know and i think i learned that throughout my career you know it was it was like this in the beginning you know it was a lot of ups you know and then there was a down and then there's an up and then there's a down and i think that uh believing in myself at the end of the day and, and having that mental toughness and not caring about what other people think. I think that that's something I've really learned. Because I've got to tell you, what you've just described is not just football, you've actually described yeah. life. And yeah. I think it's a truth that we can all learn from. Brendan Aaron said, I do want to finish by raising my third first Bud Light of the day. <laughs> I want to say it's impossible to watch you play football and not see A, how much it means to you, that joy and that indefatigable engine that runs on heart, on passion intelligence tenacity again important qualities not just for football but for life itself to your health your happiness your success 